A portion of this video is sponsored by Intel and HP. Tim Cook runs a company that doesn't keep its promises. This is not possible with current standards, but our team knows how to do this. So look for the AirPower charger next year. The iPhone is getting boring, locked down, and more expensive. Cook's total payout for the year, including the value of vested shares, came in at $102 million. And Apple executives just keep getting richer. <laughs> In 2020, choose a smartphone that works for you. Android phones are open and exciting, and there's a phone available at every price point. Go Android in 2020, because who likes Apple anyways? This message is paid for by the Friends of Android Association of America. All opinions reserved for the right of the group. Message approved by the Friends of Android Association of America. Campaign number 54768-1930. What did I just watch? 2019 was a pretty awesome year for Android phones. We saw big things happen. We saw notches get smaller, new form factors, foldables are now finally actually becoming a thing. Batteries are getting bigger, cameras are getting better, and more are being added to these phones. It was an awesome 12 months for the world of Google. But 2020 looks to be even better than last year. And there's a lot of awesome new tech, and more importantly, I think new phones to look forward to in this year. So let me run down some of the expected Android phones for 2020 that I am most pumped about. If there's any phones here that you're most pumped about, let us know in the comments down below. And be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. We hit 1.7 million subscribers and we're giving away a dream phone of your choice. So the Pixel 4 at this point is still kind of a baby in its year long life cycle, but October is not that far away. And it's never too early to think about the Pixel 5. And might this be the year we get the mythical Ultra Pixel? I don't know, we know a couple things for sure. First, to get the Pixel 5 right, I think they first have to fix some of the problems that we plagued the Pixel 4 and the 4XL, namely battery life has to be better this time around. Like that was a one knock on the 4 and the 4XL with the great phones. Battery life was a disappointment. And giving the consumer more options with the camera and the video. If I want to shoot at 30 or 60, give me that choice back. That's what Android traditionally has been about. And Google kind of limited that with the Pixel 4. I'm optimistic in thinking the new technologies that we didn't get in the last gen Pixel will be here. So perhaps the face ID sensors that can unlock with your face will maybe be hidden behind the screen or be smaller this generation. You can be sure the cameras will be amazing. From three to four, Google added a second camera on the back. Perhaps we'll see a third this time around. Also, I think we need huge steps up in screen for the price around $1,000 usually for the higher end high spec XL. I'm expecting certain things now. So 120 hertz screen is something that I think is going to be the expectation, especially when you look at towards the end of the year when the one pluses and the Samsung's have already come out with their phones. So before we get to the next phones, I do want to give a big thank you and a shout out to HP for sponsoring this video. And I've got with me the brand spanking new HP Pavilion X360 rocking Intel's latest and greatest, their 10th gen processor. This guy's got an i7 on board. So along with the Intel 10th gen i7, you also get their UHD graphics. It'll enable you to do pretty much anything that you'd want. So obviously you can do your word processing, your web browsing stuff, but also it can be a bit more powerful. Do some light gaming, light editing, photo or video on here. This laptop can hang with pretty much everything you want to throw at it. So it's a convertible laptop, so you can flip it all the way around, meaning you could rock it as a tablet. You could put it in tent mode. You could put it in presentation mode, which I think is the best for watching movies on an airplane. Comes with a stylus, so you can write on it as well. It's a 14 inch IPS panel. It's also got plenty of IO as well. You've got a couple USB type A ports. You've got a USB type C, a full size SD card slot. So if the Pavilion X360 14T sounds like something that you are interested in, we'll link to it down below. You can spec it however you want, or if you want to buy it from a retail store, they have different specs available to get the perfect laptop for you. 
So OnePlus has been on an absolute tear, really since the original OnePlus One, but the past few generations have been beasts, and I cannot wait for the OnePlus 8 around the May-ish timeline. Pete Lau has been saying 120 hertz display is a shoe in that as a fact will make its way to the OnePlus 8. Snapdragon 865 will be on board. I'd expect 16 gigs of RAM, but with OnePlus, you never know, there could be a McLaren edition. Might be the first to get us to an insane 32 gigabytes of RAM on board. But a notable thing about the OnePlus 8 might be the first OnePlus phone with a reverse course and give us wireless charging, which I would be pretty pumped about. I think of all the phones on this list that are sort of traditional form factors, the OnePlus 8 is probably one that I am most excited about. I love their take on Android. I think you get the best version of Android, actually, from OnePlus. It's also been rumors about a smaller OnePlus 8, a OnePlus 8 Lite, to have all the light-ish stuff for less money. And if that does come, that should come around the same May-ish timeframe as the regular OnePlus 8. The Motorola Razr, the first phone that I ever waited in line for was the OG Razr. Fun story, actually waited next to Ryan Seacrest uh, to pick up this phone. It brings back that familiar foldable form factor that maybe some of you guys never got to experience. The satisfaction of ending a phone call by closing it is awesome. So it's a new take on that. It's not like the Fold, which opens up into a tablet. This opens up into a regular size phone, a 6.2 inch phone. The specs may be disappointing to some. We've got a Snapdragon 710 in there, a 60 megapixel main shooter, and then a five megapixel kind of front facing. There are two displays though, so you can use that main camera when it's closed and use that display on the outside to take your selfies. I would have liked to have seen at least 855 chips that make its way in there. If not, the 865. I'm gonna reserve judgment though, till I get a chance to actually test the phone. All the things you love about, or I guess loathe, about Motorola's take on Android will be here as well. There's a fun little Easter egg inside of it though that'll turn it into looking like the old original Razer. It's got a soft spot in my heart, but not a soft spot in my wallet. It's even gonna set you back about 1500 bucks on Verizon. So I try not to flash forward too far until the end of the year, but if we're looking at holidays 2020, there's one phone that I think you should be pumped about. It's by Microsoft, they're back in the phone game with the Surface Duo. It's that dual screen phone that's not really affordable. It's got a hinge, dual 5.6 in displays. When it was announced, it was announced with the Snapdragon 855. Well, I will assume the 65 will make its way in there. Conflicting reports about 5G support, but we have seen a video showing the UI and how it can work from one screen to the next. And it looks amazing. It looks like quite a thick boy in your pocket, but the utility here is really interesting. You don't have to deal with sort of a foldable display. You get two separate screens that will sort of let you have a really solid 90 degrees if you wanna use one as a keyboard or do different things on both screens. I'm excited to at least see it. How I'm gonna use this phone on a daily basis, I don't know, but I love that Microsoft is back in the phone game, pushing the whole industry forward. So Samsung is, is not a company to sit idly by and let others take the spotlight in 2020. They're starting the year off relatively strong. Uh, Unpacked just ended a little while ago, and we've got a bunch of new phones. So of course we have the S20 line, the S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. All these phones are bringing 120 Hertz to the Galaxy S line, which is awesome. All various forms of 5G compatibility. And of course the Ultra, it's flagship feature is that crazy 100 times zoom. How useful that's gonna to be to people, I don't know. You've got a 30 times zoom on the plus. All the phones are offering close to the same features uh, at various specs and certainly various price points. The Ultra comes in starting at about $1,500. But that's not the only phone that Samsung announced. They've been in the flippy foldy game for a while uh, and they are up at bat again with the Z Flip taking kind of a Razer-esque approach to the clamshell design. It's not opening up into a tablet form factor, it's opening up into more of a conventional uh, form factor. But unlike the Razer, they're putting more premium specs inside of it. So I'm excited to take a look at it. I got a few minutes of hands-on time at Unpacked, but once you get the phone in the office, I'm pretty excited to do a full review
So there's a lot of awesome things coming out in 2020. You got phones from Huawei, phones from Sony, other phones that didn't get their own section here, like the Note 11 and the Fold 2. Lots of amazing things hitting this year in the world of Android. And the moral is I am excited about what's coming this year. And these are sort of the phones that are at the top of my mind. If we miss one, there's one that's at the top of your mind, let us know in the comments and perhaps we'll update this and make like a mid 2020 Android phones that I cannot wait to see. In the meantime though, what's coming soon, the Razer, the S20, the Z Flip will be in my hand and my pocket, not soon enough.